Ladies and gents, welcome back to Oz Gamers. You are here once again with Stephen Farrelly. Uh, I have Nicholas, uh, who we're just going to call Nick because we're Aussies and that's what we do, uh, to talk about Battlefield 3, um, which has had a pretty pretty solid run so far. Uh, you guys have done, you promised, you know, content, you're delivering on content, uh, you promised, you know, one of the most visually spectacular games of this generation and you've done that. But it seems now that the Battlefield 4 beta is kind of looming over here that maybe you might be sort of slowly wrapping it up. How, how's it all going in the office? It's going great. I mean, we're really committing to this uh, DLC plan that we're offering for BF3. And here at Gamescom, we're, we're, um, re we're revealing the Battlefield 3 Premium Edition, which basically means you get the game with Premium and a multiplayer head start kit, which basically means that, you know, if you're new to Battlefield, it might feel a bit daunting to jump in when everyone's like so far ahead. So we give you like a base of unlocks and stuff so that you can really be competitive from day one. Uh, what's been the, I mean, the process for you guys? Like obviously, you know, like we're into the third DLC now, I believe, and um, two more to go. Uh, so what, like what happens after, after that? Like when we get to um, Aftermath, what's, what's next for Battlefield 3? Well, when we get to Aftermath in December, uh, we have Endgame coming in March, uh, and that is like the five uh, announced DLCs that we have. And you know, whatever happens after that, you know, the the future will will tell. Because you guys talked pretty confidently about an aggressive post-release strategy, even going into Battlefield Four, uh, for Battlefield Three. So I'm wondering, is there going to be, you know, will will both games exist as far as the studio is concerned? Do you still think that the, you know, even if Battlefield Four is on its way, people are still going to be smashing through all the DLC, all the maps in Battlefield 3, or do you guys actually kind of want to bring it all to a tidy little end so that you can actually just kind of come out fresh with Battlefield 4? Oh, it's, it's, it's something we just have to, you know, see. It, we, we will support, you know, the players wherever they go. So the, that's kind of the commitment that we make. And, and wherever that is, you know, it's where it is. And, and we just, you know, we stick to that and make sure we support it all through. So I guess, you know, like we talked about, there's three more DLCs on their way. Uh, what have you guys learnt from you know the first few releases and just player feedback in general? I mean, obviously, it's, a, it's an ever-evolving game. Uh, there's a lot of vocal people in, in the Battlefield community. Uh, even, you know, there's a, like a lot of negatives and then a lot of positives, and you guys try and broach it all. Uh, what's, the, what's the kind of the strengths that you've learnt uh, to embrace and what's some of the weaknesses that you guys have found? Oh, it's, it's been... Like a super exciting ride from when we released the game up until now and, and, and as we keep going because we get so many so much feedback and so much comments and stuff from the community and we're trying to take that all in as we you know uh, as we try to do this you know dlc and, and patching stuff that we do uh, and it, it just comes down to trying to you know, find the best ways of approaching that and i think with the dlc plan as we have it now when we have you know we have these five things announced where we're trying to really theme the experience so that you, if you're a fan and you, for example if you get premium you get all five packs or if you buy them separately whatever you want to do, you will get this very nice and varied choice that as a player, you know, if you want to do this, if you want to do that, there is something for you to do. And I think that's the strength of the DLC plan as we have now, so you, you really cater to these different experiences and we theme them properly so that you can have these unique experiences as a player in Battlefield and, and that's, that's really what I think people really appreciate and understand. As a lead designer, uh, for you, I mean, all of the DLC packs seem quite, uh, like we just talked about, is varied. And you've got something like Armored Kill, which has got some of the biggest maps that you guys have ever done. And that's, you know, something that your community uh, actively promotes, you know, especially when it, when it comes, you know, to calling out the other guys across the aisle. Everyone's like, well, Battle Battlefield always has these giant maps and it's, it's much more emergent in terms of its gameplay and the, and the drama that you create. Uh, but then you had close quarters, which you know kind of brought this intimate, narrow, um, much more confined but visceral experience for you guys. From a design perspective, is it now that you've got this technology? Now that Battlefield is really, really back into the you know the strengths um, of the of the FPS genre that you're just flexing your wings, that you're kind of just spreading out and doing as much as you can, or is there a basic goal where you had this, where you had to have? Oh, we have to have a small map, we have to have a large map, we have to do this, we have to do that. I think it, it comes down to what I mentioned before with the experiences that you're after. Because Battlefield to me uh, is this pretty unique game because it does have 
all these different experiences in one. It's, it's, the, it's the game where you can one time, you know, you can search through a building and the other, you know, just the second after you're soaring through the skies uh, or, you know, driving across rolling hills in a tank. I think that is the, like the real strength of Battlefield, this, uh, this sandbox of things that you can do and experience. And I think the, the important thing is to allow the gamers to have that choice and to, to really feel like I can choose my experience and that's what the hacks are trying to do. Uh, and I think it, that's kind of the core of Battlefield and we're not moving away from that. It's, it's this sandbox, it's your choice, you can play it your way. And I, I think that's important. Um, I know you're going to balk as often as you can at Battlefield 4 questions, but I'm wondering if the beta's, up, is, if the beta's coming soon, then clearly there's, there's a uh, contingent of people out at DICE that are working on it. How is the team split up? Are you focusing specifically on the DLC or are you kind of spread across both, both titles? Uh, we have a dedicated team for doing the DLC. So that's a team that's perfect, you know, they're committed to supporting BF3 as it is. And, and I am, you know, the lead designer of that team and we're uh, creating these packs and we're hard at work doing all of that stuff right now. So there is a committed team to the DLC. We're not like splitting things or, or so it's, it's a focus that we have. Uh, in terms of uh, Frostbite, what's kind of been the process for evolution for that for you? Because obviously with uh, new engines, you kind of learn as you go along. And the beauty of having you know, such a strong DLC plan is that, especially when you're pushing boundaries like you know, the armored kill maps and stuff, what have you guys learned um, in terms of you know, just getting more out of that tech? Yeah, we're, we're constantly trying to, you know, uh, the Frostbite 2 engine was a huge success and it took some hard work to get it done, you know, and, and we've seen uh, how successful it's been and it's been awesome, you know, as an experience. And we're trying to, like, improve stuff and, and you know, you figure out the kinks and you r really try to optimize the tech and, and be, you know, as efficient as you can with everything. So I think that's just going to keep going and we're going to, you know, improve and, and learn and, and so on with the engine and, of course, improve it from a technical side as well. So, you know, it's, I, I only see it moving forward. Has it changed much since uh, it was first rolled out? Like just from, I guess from a visual glance for you guys, like are you just seeing more com coming out of it? Uh, well, there's been a lot of changes, but it's more you know from a development point of view where we improve our own tools and, and, and those things and, and workflows and everything to make our you know the creative process much more efficient. So uh, I think th those are the b big changes that have happened that we've developed. Now, as a designer and a uh, Battlefield player, I assume. Um, do you ever go through and just see like these kind of crazy moments and think that single thing that we just saw needs to be the focus of an entire DLC pack? Like, what's the, I mean, if you had, obviously you have all these plans moving forward, but are you guys evolving those plans as well as you, as you, as you reach uh, closer to completion with the uh, other packs? I think one really, it's one of the really biggest coolest things about Battlefield is these moments that you speak of when you see something happen that's like whoa what was that like it could be anything crazy that happens and you might feel tempted to like we need to package that event into something and and like script it so that we know that it will happen and the, and and people will experience it but i think that kind of removes something really core in Battlefield because if the things that happen aren't caused and controlled by the players themselves something they actively do then it's not as interesting anymore to me. I think when it's just scripted, it's like watching a movie. It's not as interactive as you would like it to be. I mean, it can be awesome to watch, but it's even more awesome in my mind if you actually create it yourself. So I don't think we ever want to like remove that freedom and replace it with something kind of pre-packaged so that you you get it like a, a scripted thing in a round, for example. It's it's it needs to have that player interactivity and and kind of uh, emergency. Uh, there's that um, amazing video that was released um, quite a few months back now. A gentleman in a in a jet, and he, he does, does a vertical climb, then he jumps out, and then with a um, rocket launcher, shoots the other jet, and then gets back into his jet. Um, you know, that's some great exploitation of, of the systems in play. Do you guys ever watch that stuff and go, uh, we shouldn't be allowing for that? Because, you know, in 1942, people were like, we would jump on the wings of the planes and... So, I mean, do you guys uh, embrace that, or do you? Is it stuff that you think, well, maybe we need to uh, we need to fix the systems? Oh, we fully, fully, hundred percent embrace it. I mean, the loop zook video. I mean, that is awesome. To me, that is 
the, the, the best you know, moment you can have as a gamer. If you manage to pull that off and you, know, you capture, it, capture it on video, upload it to YouTube. Yeah. To me, that's a super cool experience. And I would never want to like, now remove that from players or anything like that. Yeah. Those things are gold in my mind. Do you have a specific um, moment that, that's been captured that you can remember that's actually like the standout one for you? Oh, for me, uh, I haven't done anything you know, as awesome as the loop tuking or, or something like that. But, but I, do, um, I do remember, that wasn't my moment though, but, but there was this guy on Damavan Peak stood on the, on the top of the base jump and shot with a machine gun. He shot the helicopter pilot out of the helicopter and dived down like this in air and caught the helicopter in mid-fall and then flew down. Uh, and, you know, I wish I were the one doing that, yeah. Okay, Nick, we'll, we'll, we'll leave it there because, you know, we kind of know what's coming uh, and we know that it's, you know, it's just more awesome Battlefield. So um, just hurry up and get it out there so that we can move on to Battlefield 4. <laughs> yeah, working hard. Okay. All right, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Cheers.